The YouTube Symphony Orchestra commanded the most media coverage than any other event in Carnegie Hall history, generated millions of views, created world-class educational videos featuring the most prominent classical musicians in the entire world, gave musicians an opportunity to play together, with some calling it the most inspiring performance recorded in orchestral history. Yet after two performances, the YouTube Symphony Orchestra ceased to exist. Huh? What happened? How do you get to Carnegie Hall, upload, upload, upload. <laughs> In late 2008, a Google employee, Tim Lee, was a classical music enthusiast. He wanted to enhance the accessibility of classical music by utilizing YouTube's ability to reach an international audience. Lee pitched this idea to his classical music practitioners in addition to other Google executives, receiving a positive response so strong that Google ended up securing Carnegie Hall as the venue for the inaugural YSO performance. We had several thousand video uploads from over seven countries, including Azerbaijan, uh, Kazakhstan, and it just shows the power of how far YouTube has managed to reach and also the global nature of classical music. Google hired Michael Tilson Thomas to conduct the symphony, award-winning composer Tan Dun to write an internet symphony for the orchestra. World-class talent like violinist Gil Shaham, Yo-Yo Ma, Lang Lang, the composer Mason Bates, and Korean TV soap star Song Hye Kyo. Google even hired Yuja Wang to play one of the best performances of Flight of the Bumblebee I've ever heard in my life. In order to create the symphony, Google needed to have an audition. Hi YouTube, this is Tandun. I'm very excited to bring the YouTube Symphony Orchestra to you. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us in creating the world's first collaborative online orchestra. On December 1st, 2008, YouTube released a worldwide audition call asking anyone and everyone to record themselves on video and apply to the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. Practice it and practice it and practice it. Practice. Don't be intimidated. Play with your heart and give it all you've got. Let's do it together. Over 3,000 musicians from 70 territories applied to get in, with only 200 hand-picked musicians advancing to the semi-final round. For the semi-final round, the YouTube Symphony Orchestra would release 200 audition tapes for the public, who could then vote on which performances they liked the most. The instrumentalist with the most positive engagement with viewers received an all-expense paid trip to New York for a performance in Carnegie Hall. I'm going to New York. Auditions like these are incredibly stressful. In fact, studies have shown that musicians are 60% more likely to experience anxiety and 40% more likely to experience symptoms of depression, which is why you should consider today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Nobody knows this about me, but in my junior year of college, I was so anxious that I admitted myself to the hospital. At the time, I felt my face was going to give out while playing trombone. I felt like I was going to collapse any second. The doctor looked at me and was just like, hey, I'm going to give you a fake diagnosis because I want you to have a good reason to have missed the things you have missed in your schedule. And at that time, I realized that I should really consider going to therapy. I started going to therapy and I started diagnosing my problems. I realized a lot of things about myself and it helped me really turn things around, which is why I think you would benefit from BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful and unbiased advice. You do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat, or messaging. It's the easiest way to start talking to a therapist today. By using the link in the description below, you can visit BetterHelp's website and get matched with a therapist. Most people are matched to a therapist, usually within 48 hours of signing up. Everyone who uses my link gets to enjoy a 10% discount on their first month of therapy. Fun fact, MTT's New World Symphony is actually partnered with BetterHelp to provide free therapy to all the fellows in the New World Symphony. Thank you, BetterHelp. For the 2011 audition, the London Symphony Orchestra partnered with Google to create a series of public masterclasses on how to play the pieces found on the audition. This series of masterclasses are some of the most popular and well-polished educational pieces of content to be found on YouTube to this day, receiving an overwhelming positive response from viewers. Most masterclasses today don't even reach 50k viewership and YouTube is four times larger today than it was in 2011. But this audition process was not without its problems. Shayla Whitley and Shara Rambaran were quick to note that although the orchestra boasted a multicultural membership of 96 representatives from more than 30 countries, 85% of these musicians were selected from were schooled in North America and Europe. 
In response to the 2011 orchestra, the LA Times wrote that everyone already has a chance to play at the Sydney Opera House, and applicants' chances of securing the position improve if he or she has put in the roughly 10,000 hours of practice required, but is not strictly necessary. Neither is going to Juilliard or owning a $500,000 instrument. While Google did offer the opportunity for musicians to play with their unique instruments and create an internet symphony mashup from the applicant pool, they ultimately fell short when it came to representation of certain countries around the world. But that's not to say the audition process was a complete failure. Responding to YouTube's encouragement of any kind of wacky creative way of presenting oneself, Japanese pianist Aiko Sudo converted a piccolo part for the toy piano. Her performance of Mozart on the toy piano was a visually stunning performance that convinced viewers that she had to have an extra part created just for her in the symphony. Since YouTube allowed anyone with any instrument to audition, even if the instrument is not typically seen in orchestra, Aiko Sudo became a guest performer with the symphony orchestra. Maki Takafuji, on the other hand, garnered criticism for her 70,000 views after playing the instrument dressed in a kimono. Critics were quick to note that some contestants would use visuals to distract people from their musicality. In fact, one person said that her clip drew more than 150 comments, many of which mentioned her beautiful kimono or her cute Japanese accent. Ben Chan, on the other hand, decided to get more people involved in the audition process by creating a video tutorial series in 2009. Hello, YouTubers. It is Ben Chan, and I just barely lost all my music. If I'm sharing how I play it, I may have a lesser chance to get into the orchestra because everybody else is going to be playing as well as I do if they learn the same techniques. Now, that's okay for me. Uh, I want the, the, it, the orchestra to be the best that it can be. Chan became a minor YouTube star, attracting as much accolade for his fuzzy sweaters and teddy bear props as for his technique. Take my two fingers, my thumb and my first finger, and I pinch the string, and then I pull up very slightly and then let go. In the words of Kiri Miller, he was creating a new community space of practice. After the audition concluded, 90 winners were selected to perform with the YouTube Symphony Orchestra, including a professional poker playing cellist and a physics professor. It's not a great living. I'm not going to get rich doing this. Nobody is, but it's, I couldn't imagine it any other way. And thus commence what is possibly one of the most chaotic rehearsal schedules in orchestral music history. I've often prepared concerts in a day or two days, but of course it's been with people who regularly play together all the time, who are active professionals. They've played those pieces hundreds of times. So it's kind of just, uh, where are we? Remember this? Okay, go. But this was very different because many of the people in the orchestra have never played a lot of this repertoire. Google actually made a documentary about the formation of the YouTube Symphony Orchestra in 2009. And in it, you can see all the tension building up during the two days of rehearsals, which is actually one of the reasons why the YouTube Symphony never got back together. Two, three, four. Something, something, something. I heard something different than what my score says. Oh, so, excuse me, but Mason, I've got two bars. Bump, 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 bump. It's, can we, can we start in bar one? <laughs> Getting an orchestra full of people of varying skill levels from all around the world with language barriers is a nightmare to put together in just two days. Two days. They didn't have a week. Most band programs take three months. So of, of course the coaches are going to be a little bit tense right now. Like of course they're going to be. You speak too late and then you go f too fast. You're doing this. No, do this. Correct rhythm, please. You're just letting the sound go, eh, eh, on every note. D, D, D. You, you're playing. It's not that. It's please play the correct rhythm. All the musicians, while they weren't rehearsing, were also busy doing interviews with different news outlets. The documentary literally says it's the most media coverage any one Carnegie Hall concert has ever received in its history. Do you like classical music? Not so much. You have to try it. It's like gross. Oh, it's really a problem for us. You must be exactly with everybody. This timpani player must be horrified. I would be. Be careful here, Owen, that we don't have yata da. Look at his face. He looks defeated right now. Confusing to us over here. Everyone, same place. That's just part of the gig. You kind of have to show up and you have to nail it. And if you don't, 
then you're kind of a big problem. We have a lot of ideas of where the second beat is, many of them too early. Most orchestras rehearse anywhere between two and a half hours and five hours in any given day. But the YouTube Symphony Orchestra had six three hour long rehearsals over the course of two days. We all have day jobs or we're in school, so it's been really difficult to learn all the music for this. It's uh, too short time for, for this program. It's too big program for, for only two days of rehearsal. I have read now um, more than I have read in the last 10 years. Can we start now? Because I only have 20 minutes. We've got one minute left, huh? Yeah. From beginning to the end. But <laughs> no, seriously, you got are you you have we, we started five minutes early, so please whatever you need to fix, do it now. I'm guessing that he didn't feel like he had enough time to rehearse his own composition, given that he only has one opportunity for this piece to be performed to a international audience. Fourth notes needs to be shorter, a fifth notes needs to be louder. That's become more jazzy. And next one. 45, 46. On the day of the concert, the symphony performed to a full stage at Carnegie Hall to a very enthusiastic audience. The performance went well, although it was not without its bumps and bruises. The major theme of the entire documentary is Tan Dun's premiere of his internet symphony. All players around the world getting together through the internet, playing along with Maestro Tan Dun conducting to complete and total silence in order to create a internet symphony featuring everyone's audition tapes from around the world. And in fact, this was very successful. It got 1.5 million views. Everyone seemed to like it. What succeeded less was the performance live. It only got 155,000 views. There was a little bit more excitement for the other performances. Despite Sarah Wellis inferring that another YTSO performance was in the works, and let's hope that the next YouTube Symphony Orchestra is just around the corner. Google never brought back YTSO. In the words of Michael Tilson Thomas, the whole mission of the orchestra was to bring classical music closer to people's hearts. And in some ways it did, but in other ways, it didn't seem to have the impact that it was hoping to have. While there are no official reasons why the orchestra shut down, I do think there are many benefits to bringing the orchestra back. Orchestras from around the world are facing declining ticket sales, are receiving less funding from donors, lack of marketability due to a reluctance to embrace social media trends. Social media projects like the YouTube Symphony not only brings a lot of people together through the shared experience of music, but also encourages people to think of the symphony orchestra as something that you can go to with your friends, your family, and your loved ones. In the past couple years alone, the San Antonio Symphony completely shut down in addition to several other symphonies that had to go on strike due to budget cuts. Musicians from around the world are hurting for more opportunities to perform and to support themselves and their families. Which brings me to Mr. Beast. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And let me know if you want more video essays like this. Thank you so much. Let's connect the mainstream media world to the classical music performance world. I would love that to happen.